You guys, this is a personal favorite episode of mine. Gina DeVe, the founder of Divine Living and author of Audacity to Be Queen, a book that completely cracked open my mindset about stepping into a bigger life unapologetically and leaning into promoting myself and leaning into being a successful woman and without apology, with grace. Such a good book that started me on my journey a year and a half to two years ago. So excited to have this lovely woman and queen on my podcast. She's a lifestyle and empowerment brand for women globally. And she's such an accomplished speaker, transformational coach, and podcast host. You will have to go check her out in the show notes. You know, within every woman lives a queen, Gina affirms. And only from the position of queen can you fulfill your purpose. Today in our episode, we talk about what it means to be a queen and how we don't need to pretend anymore and that we are brilliant and we are capable and we are fabulous and the world needs us to own our power, really raise our standards and contribute our talents like never before. And when we do that, we make massive impact, massive impact. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoy this special episode with Miss Gina DeVee. Hey friend, Melissa Hinault here with the Burnout to All Out podcast. I'm a former multiple six-figure executive corporate burnout, feeling stuck in the life I built for myself. But using my corporate skills, I took to the internet and have built multiple six and seven-figure businesses showing others how they can build a life they love. Now on this podcast, I share stories of being an entrepreneur, a mom to my three amazing kids, and wife to my wonderful and supportive husband who supports all my wild and crazy dreams. My journey is taking grit and persistence and belief. And believe me, I'm still a work in progress that you may witness in real time. Whether it's in our free burnout to all out Facebook community or inside my mastermind or even in my coaching programs or maybe just right here on the podcast. I'm laughing and I'm crying with you. I've become a serial entrepreneur with a passion to inspire more burnouts to take the leap of faith and go all out and live out their dreams. Consider me your mentor in your head and on the go. So let's get started. All right, we are live with the Burnout to All Out community. I think we're actually streaming over to LinkedIn and a couple of other places as well. So excited to have Gina DeVe here today as my guest. Gina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh my gosh, so fun. And as we kick this off, I want to start by saying, and I don't know that you're even aware of this, but it's so fun that we are here on International Women's Day. And it is literally, I picked your book up about two years ago, you guys, Audacity to be Queen. Everyone in my mastermind knows about it, but any of you guys who follow me, um, I picked this book up when I initiated my journey into really starting my own business. And this book literally set my head on fire to really step into my power as a female entrepreneur and lean into being visible and leaning in with confidence and being unapologetic about it to really manifest my dreams. And you, my friend, were an igniter of two years ago, a business that's now done over a million dollars in sales because of you. Well, congratulations. Well, well deserved. The book just turned to this day, basically. So you must have gotten it right on launch week and look at how far you've come in just two short years. It's been huge. It's been huge. Oh my gosh. And maybe it's a little under two years. It probably isn't two years on the nose, right? That I picked this book up. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the nuggets in your book today that really encourage women to be unapologetic about going after their dreams. But before we do, because this is the Burnout to All Out podcast, I want to go back to your days as the struggling psychotherapist, oh, right? Lord, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It's hard to even imagine that was 
my life. And yet I'm, I'm so grateful for it. I certainly remember where I came from and I have a real heart for over givers and under earners, which I think a lot of women are regardless of your profession. So yes, I was just, um, I really desired to help people transform their lives. I got a master's degree in clinical psychology to be a transformational, um, you know, facilitate transformation. I just didn't know that when I became a psychotherapist, I became an entrepreneur. Somebody left that out somewhere along the way. And I thought if you were just good at what you did, then you would get clients. So I, that, that wasn't true. And I was like, okay, so my parents were public school teachers, grew up in the Midwest, Midwest work ethics. So the next thing was, well, if you want to make more money, because I now needed to earn money, you just work harder. So I was like, okay, well, I'm willing to work. And then I like, I found myself like just doing sliding scale rates, under earning, over giving, going over in sessions. And then like, that wasn't enough. So then I had to see like what else I could do. Well, let me like do the marketing for the clinic and let me like help with this leadership there. Let me bust tables after work. And it just, after a year and a half, I was giving, giving, giving so much. I was $75,000 in debt, living off of two grand a month at home with my parents in Detroit. And I was just like, I hated helping people. Like that's the burnout level I got to, which is not a good place for anyone to be in, especially when it's how you earn your living. Right. (laughs) But that, that was how it started is like, I literally within a year and a half, 75 hour weeks, like not sustainable. Yes. Oh my gosh. So everybody in entrepreneurship gets to that moment. Everybody has a story, right? They get to this moment Mm -hmm. of aha, of like something has to change. Like God willing, doesn't matter if I have to sleep on a floor somewhere, like something has to change. Mm -hmm. So what was it for you that gave you the willingness, the faith to, you know, basically walk away from this career with this title, with this degree. And I know that you're still in coaching and all those things, but like being a fellow farm D who like basically left the industry I was in, people thought I was crazy, right? (laughs) I want to hear from you. What was it that that pivotal moment for you and how did you channel that inner strength to, to move forward and bet on yourself? You know, I mean, it kind of seems easy looking back on it. I'm trying to remember like how I really felt. I was, I look at, I was naive and I believed in geographical cure. Like I was just like, what do I, what am I really giving up here? I mean, I know it was like my license and all that. And that did seem like a big deal at the time. I was like, wait a minute, I can have a license and be working 75 hours a week and living on $2,000 a month, or I cannot have a license self-declare myself a life coach and make as much as I can figure out how to make. I mean, I was like, you know, and I just, you know, I would go home. I I think I remember the night. It was a, it was another Friday night, boyfriendless, like had worked late. I'm sitting there literally like late, like 10 o'clock. I got home. I think I'm sitting there watching like entertainment tonight or Hollywood, some Hollywood or whatever. And I was just like, Everybody in LA is beautiful and wealthy. Like, <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. together quarters. Like, and then I'm just like, come on. Like, I am just going to believe in geographical cure and go for it. So I did. And it kind of actually, it, it, it did work out because like the environment that you're in is so influential. I got out to the land of the sunshine and, and I realized like people in California, like have that kind of like, going for the gold mentality. Like the people that originally went there, they were digging for gold and people have been going to California to pursue their dreams for a long time. And all of a sudden it didn't seem illegal. It just seemed like that's what you do here. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I love it for you. It was, it was a calling. Like it was just this magnetic force that got you there believing in that geographical metamorphosis. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you went there and You know, again, you guys, you can, I I have a lot of other questions I'm going to ask her, but if you want the full story, go get her book. We're doing a massive cliff notes here so we can get into some really good questions. But you got there and you ultimately launched a whole brand. You launched this business. It's, you can look back now and on the the back end of you being this multi-million dollar 
this empire that you've built in coaching and leading and transforming people's lives, right? But there was this whole journey that got you there, right? What I would love to do is maybe quickly about business, and then we're going to get into mindset, is ask two specific questions I love to ask. And the first one is, and I love this question because I learned so much from people. What in your journey over the last 20 years, if you look back, felt like one of the, like, I felt like such a hard or difficult challenge. And you look back now having overcome it, that it's a blessing. Maybe it will seem it's felt like a mistake or an issue going through it, but you look back and that, and it happened for you, right? Like, are there any blessing moments that didn't feel like blessings in the middle of it and scaling to where you are today, but you look back now and it actually happened for you? Oh, so many. And I don't know why I'm coming up with this one, but I'm following my intuition. This is when you asked the question, the first thing that came up was it was before I started my business. I was a senior in college and I got the opportunity to become an intern at the Supreme Court of the United States giving public lectures. And my grade point average was not so great. I was always a great speaker, but not academically. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to my boss at the time and asking him, like, should I stay at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and take one more class so I can boost my grade point average a bit, or go to Washington, D.C. and give lectures at the Supreme Court of the United States? Like, (laughs) this was like a real, like, Ooh, and and I was really veering towards staying and doing the, the safe thing. So I think that it's just this mentality of people don't, like we ask like how much does something going to cost, but they, we don't ask what's it going to cost us not to do something. Yes. Um, so whether it's like signing up for a mentorship program or hiring a team or an agency or taking a trip or putting yourself in some kind of environment. And so I think that, this almost counterintuitive way of being mm-hmm. has, has definitely served. And that is the more feminine approach to business because it is more intuitive. It's not so logical. It's not so linear. And so that was the, I mean, I have others, but that's what came up. So let me guess. So you, did you decide to go to DC? <laughs> which then led me to the White House, which then led me to Harvard's Institute of Politics, which then you know, inadvertently led me to Marianne Williamson and, you know, and then after I started my business. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, and it was, that was a blessing and a leap of faith, right? Yeah. Are you looking for 360 degrees support in launching your online business? It is a confusing space if you're new to the industry, or even if you've been around for a while, maybe you're looking to elevate your inner circle in the process, elevating your income. You just might be the perfect candidate for our burnout to all out mastermind. Take a listen to some of our clients who are in the program now. And if it piques your curiosity, head over to our burnout to all out.co website and register for our masterclass today. We'll be spending three days unpacking the most important aspects of online business from the front end on sales and marketing and your personal brand to the back end of operations and technology to be seen and heard online all the way to the financial aspects of what it takes to get started and delegate in this industry. You do not want to miss this upcoming masterclass. I'm giving all the goods for free. Join us today. Hi, my name is Jody Barber, and I have had the incredible privilege to be part of the Burnout to All Out Mastermind for the past several months. I did not know what I was getting into fully when I said yes to this, and I cannot even tell you how many times I have said to my husband, said to friends in my life, I am so glad that I said yes to this opportunity. I work with a company that just launched into social selling. It is called MIG Living. And although the timing has been really exciting, the support that I didn't even realize I needed was in knowing how to put systems in place so that when we do hit the momentum phase as a company, I'm not frantically flying by the seat of my pants. And I would say, That has been one of the biggest benefits of this mastermind has been the incredible knowledge, the incredible experience, the hands-on help in building systems 
so that you can thrive as a business owner. Many of the things that I've been taught and introduced to in this mastermind, I didn't even know were out there. And I'm so thankful that I said yes to this and that I made the investment. So good. So good. And it's funny when you look back on the sequence of events that ultimately put you where you are today, right? Well, speaking of where you are today, and this is a this has been a hot topic, and I know it's a little bit in your book, and I know a lot a lot of women endure this. And I'm I'm curious your kind of Cliff Notes version to this, but it's as we lean in, as we embrace becoming a queen, as we become visible, and as success follows us, it happens that there's people that get into comparison mode and they can't handle your growth, or it's a reflection for them. And I guess where I'm going with this is, is kind of that, that mean girl mentality that's, that's really kind of toxic. Mm -hmm. What do you say to these younger, or they don't have to be younger. When I say younger, I mean like newer entrepreneurs. You know, I've got a lot of folks in my network who are in the throes of launching businesses and they're kind of upgrading their own kind of DNA in the process and maybe aren't getting the support. Maybe as they're getting bigger and more visible, there's uh, arrows being thrown at them. What do you say to the women who maybe are experiencing some of that or their fear of becoming too big, which Mm -hmm. sounds crazy to say out loud, but it's a thing, right? A fear of becoming too successful. Can you speak to that? Sure, sure, sure. So I always say, if you want the best personal development seminar on the planet, start your own business. (laughs) Because the real truth is whatever you're afraid of someone else saying about you, well, first of all, they probably already have. (laughs) Um, So for most of us, the thing that we have fear the most has already happened. But really what it is, it's what we on some level believe. Because if anyone were to say to any of us, like you have green hair, like, that's not true. And we're also not going to be like, no, I don't. My hair's brown. Like my hair's not green. Like you're not going to get defensive. You're not going to get reactive. You're going to like, just be like, not my reality, not my truth. So anytime someone can say something that bothers us like that, then on some level, we believe it's true. So that Mm. is our work to do. You know, I used to be afraid that people were going to say she's just in it for the money, right? Mm -hmm. Because I had such a money story and I didn't want to be perceived because I had a thing around money being right, this and that. And then finally, I got to a point doing the work of myself and and my own confidence issues. I literally got to a place that was like, give me some credit. If I was into anything just for the money, do you think I'd become a life coach? Like, like investment banker, okay, commercial real estate, fine, but life cut, like real, that's what people do just for the money. Like, so, but I had nothing on it anymore. Mm. And, you know, someone wrote something, I don't know, some troll wrote something about me on, on Instagram lately, and someone felt the need to send me the screenshot on the DM or whatever. And I was like, I just don't pay any attention to that anymore. I'm so focused on all of the women who are lit up by my message, who my book has inspired and, and all the cool projects I've got going on. And she was like, bam, oh yeah. Like, so this is where, now I'm not saying that I'm Teflon and I'm not saying that anything that somebody said about me wouldn't affect me or that I don't get triggered. Of course I do. Mm-hmm. It just shows me if I'm going to really take personal responsibility that's a wounded area for me to heal. And I can be thankful that it's brought to my attention so I can strengthen that area. So good. I just so good there. Um, well, on that note, talking about money, huh? and I know that you you believe in God, you're a religious person, mm-hmm. right? And let's let's speak a little bit about money and is it evil or Obviously, we don't think it's evil, but I know that many people struggle with this as one of the biggest challenges in money mindset. Yeah. And I think you do a great job speaking to this. So for those who've been raised with these money mindsets that are really wrapped around religion and that it's evil or that it does only bad things, can you speak to that to folks who have maybe some level of guilt about money? 
Yes. Money is the biggest story on the planet. You know, it just, it just is. And the more people that have a healthy relationship with money, the the better off this planet is going to be. You know, it's look at money buys choices that look. And if you are in fear for survival, you're going to like be out of alignment. You're going to be in that fight or flight mode all the time. I do write about in my book. And so it's so unfair on behalf of money. Money gets such a bad rap because like what I just always say is like, if anyone wants to get really healthy and they're going to like go like work out and have their diet and their trainer and their nutritionist and take supplements, we're all like, go oh, girl, like you can do this. And if someone else is like, I'm going to hire uh, a coach and work on my relationship and call in my soulmate because I'm going to have love in my life. We're like, yeah, you deserve it. And it's like, you know, I'm going to really work on my money issues and get my money stuff. And we're like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, like, it's the only area of our life where we're like not allowed to actually have a really healthy relationship with it. And so when it comes down to it, money is just a tool. It's just a tool to fund your life and fund your dreams. Like, Food is a tool to fuel your body. Mm-hmm. And if there is too little of it, there's nothing glorious or spiritual about that. Mm-hmm. Also, if there's too much of it, there's nothing glorious or spiritual about that. Like stuffing yourself, we all know what it's like to overeat. It's a sick feeling. And we all know what it's like to not feed ourselves or nourish ourselves and not for the right timing. Also a sick feeling. So when you get that money is energy and everyone is supposed to and is meant to have the amount of energy or money for their lives for whatever those purposes are. However many zeros, I don't have a thing on that anymore. If your dream or your genuine desires have a certain price tag on it, do, like it's God doesn't care. It's seek first the kingdom of heaven and then all of these things will be added unto you. And we can go on and on with all of the prosperity scriptures that are out there. I think the most important thing is to realize it's not about making money a God. Like we can't chase money and think that's the thing. Just like you can't chase anything externally. You can't chase the lover and you can't chase like even the physical body. But when you are connected with source, and you are self-sourcing that everything is coming from the divine, then it's really about abundance in whatever form that's right for you. Mm, I love this. So good. Really quick, because I know in your book, you talk about really embodying that. I think that you've you've had some scenarios where you went out and maybe bought something just to to kind of embrace. My abundance um, issues. <laughs> yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, look at JLo is my spirit animal and I am like, I got the archetype of queen to like do my life's work. And if everyone thinks it's just like a yes, queen, it's not. It's based on the ancient story of Queen Esther of Persia. It's a true story. Jews know it from Purim. Christians know it from the Bible. And so there's a very substantive purpose to queenhood and it is an archetype. I'm just glad God did not give me the monk archetype because I'm way more into the royal robes in the castle than the burlap and the whole thing. <laughs> um, so I just think that I have genuine desires and they are what they are. And I personally love that I love food and fashion and travel and and five star ho- hotels. It's just my thing. Other people love hiking or biking and Birkenstocks or camping and sleeping underneath the stars. And like, that's their thing. And other people like spending time with kids. Like, like I think just everyone gets to have their thing. And the faster we stop making other people wrong for whatever their thing is, the better. Mm. Yes. So good. Okay. So with that, You speak a lot to divine living, right? Mm -hmm. Like being visible, global impact, enjoying your life. I mean, you're living what you what you teach, right? Can you speak in these last couple of minutes to our community of really what it is to embody being that queen? Well, I can speak to what it is for me. And I just want to make sure that it's really clear. Everyone can and must define what being a queen is for them because queen is being the best version of your life. So that's whatever that is for you. So I grew up in an environment where everything was about being really deep and substantive and spiritual and psychologically sound. And 
And that was all like the the stuff that was rewarded and praised. But I also really loved all things lifestyle. I loved, always loved the glitz, the glamour, the, the food, fashion, travel. And I found that when I was a psychotherapist and under earning and just giving, and my life was just full of tons of meaning, but when I didn't have the financial and material abundance, it felt really flat for me. It felt inauthentic. Like, like I was giving what I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little pendulum swing and went and hung out with people that were all about, you know, whatever martinis and the whole situation, like, and they couldn't have some sort of conversation to say, well, that was empty to me. So for me, divine living is having a divinely inspired career and a divine lifestyle, whatever that is for you. Um, it could be money freedom. It could be time freedom. It could be being able to do work that you love. You know, most a lot of people joke around and say they need to leave their work to do something meaningful. I'd always joke and say I need to leave mine to do something meaningless. Like my, I got meaning in my life. Like I, I coached 10 hours a day for 20 years in some capacity or another. Like I got the meaning part down. And I also like to have a lot of fun and spend white truffle season in Italy. So yes. Yeah. Now, did you buy that farmhouse out in Italy? The farmhouse did not get bought. That was, it got swooped out from underneath us. So we didn't even get to make an offer. However, we just got back from Mexico and just bought a piece of land there. So we're going to build there. Italy's still on the docket. The house just has it. Take a stand for the end, but Mexico is coming. Oh my gosh. So exciting. Well, so Gina, where can folks come find you? What do you have going on? I know that you had some incredible luxury, luxury retreats going on last year that I missed. And I will not miss them again. So tell us what you have going on. Sure, sure, sure. Well, come on over to divineliving.com. Everything is really going to be there for you. And you can check out the whole world of Divine Living. I've got my podcast, the Divine Living Podcast. And um, I have a really cool app. If you're loving like the book, you can get it at divineliving.com forward slash book. Um, but the app is like all things queen. It's like Gina Devine, Netflix, and you can meet all these other cool women oh, cool. in the world. Yeah, divineliving.com forward slash app. There's like unlimited videos. I do live things in there. And then anytime I have like a live event or a luxury retreat coming up, uh, the Q Club is the first to know. Awesome. All right. And we'll make sure we put that all in the show notes. Very last question. What are you reading right now? As much as we love your book, is there anything oh. you are reading right now? Well, I can tell you, I just got my, I got two books in today. So I haven't started it, but I've got a uh, life pass. So this just showed up. So the right. um, author, the woman who started class pass wrote life pass. Oh, and my editor sent me this book. Grief is love living with Lost by Marissa Renee Lee. So I just got these books and I'm going to open them up. Love it. Okay. Well, Gina, thank you so much for your time. We so appreciate you and the impact that you're you're making and motivating and inspiring so many across this planet. So thank you so much. Wow, Melissa, thanks so much for having me. It's been super fun. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. For free resources, materials, or information on my coaching services, go ahead over to livethefreelife.co. That's livethefreelife.co. Or check out our Facebook community at Burnout to All Out. And make sure you follow Burnout to All Out on Spotify and subscribe to iTunes. And it would truly mean the world to me if you paused for just a second gave me that five-star review of the show and be sure to share this episode with any burnouts you think would be inspired to go all out after hearing this episode.